How about this for a Talking Tuesday? Yes, Ohio State is back on the practice field for spring ball later on. Berm and I will talk about that on the podcast daily. But before we get to that, there's also a basketball season that's ongoing, and there is a new full-time coach. That is Jake Diebler. He got the job over the weekend on the permanent basis after a successful interim stint, and he's going to be coaching in the NIT later on Tuesday night. So, Jake Diebler, first of all, congratulations Thank you. on the promotion. Thank you. This month has been, I'm sure, one of the crazier that you've lived through. Uh, you go from Valentine's Day to St. Patrick's Day and, and your whole career is on a different trajectory. Uh, just be, take me through that, what it's like to have been in your shoes for the last month. <laughs> it's been tiring. Um, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of joy, um, a lot of opportunity to connect with people and relationships have grown significantly through this. So. It's hard to put into like really just a couple words because so much went into this. I've, I've talked about the challenges when it first happened and how that how I felt about that and the emotions involved in that. And then you win a game against Purdue on your home court. Then all of a sudden we get some things going and now we're in a bubble conversation. So now we're playing in the postseason. Where we started here a little over a month ago to where we are now, I'm so proud of just how our guys have come together and what we've been able to do. So you described this, you know, on Monday, you have a dream. You don't know when or if you're ever going to achieve that. Uh, you have your, your family sitting in the front row. You're in the shot. You're being announced publicly. There's a band in there. You didn't cry. I don't know how to. I almost did when <laughs> I looked at my dad when I was talking about him. Outside of that, it's, we've had some emotional moments uh, leading up to this, so I'm, I might be running out of emotions okay, huh? a little bit. But, um, no, it's – I think I don't have a, really an issue being transparent with how I feel, and, and this place is so special to me. I hope people can see and feel that. And it means a great deal to our family. We, we take the responsibility of being here so seriously and – that's why I wanted to acknowledge our former players that were here because they're such a critical part of this program. They're a foundation piece and, and going to be important as we move forward. So it's been a lot of emotions. I may be just running a little bit lower <laughs> than when I started a couple of days okay. ago. Well, maybe Friday or Saturday night. That's different. Yeah. I don't know. We just got you yeah. at a different time. Or you're used to it. I mean, it's still up on the, on the ribbon board in here. Head coach Jake D, Jake D where I was driving yeah. on the road down here, they had the interim scratched out. I mean, that probably takes some time to get used to, doesn't it? It does. It does. And there'll be a time, hopefully, we get through this season and off season and, and prior to getting started up next school year where we really get to sit down and reflect and look back and, and just, you know, acknowledge kind of what God has done and how it how it made us feel, what we we're able to do. Right now, we got to something to, to do tomorrow night. And, sure. And this is a busy, important and critical time of year for building for next year. You know, so all of that stuff going on right now, we, we got plenty to do. I was going to say, if, if we're thinking back about the last month and getting your feet under you to do this stuff at the at the high level and in the top spot, the portal's open. You're trying to beat Cornell. You're going to be, you know, working on recruiting and, and who knows, you know, roster retention is so different now. The next month is probably going to be just as fatiguing as this last month. I, I don't envy this is your first opportunity to be a head coach and you just got thrown in, not in the middle of a season, but also the most insane time in college athletics. Like have fun, I guess. I don't well, you should have because I, <laughs> I get to live a dream and I got the, I got the best head coaching seat you could possibly ask. It's the for, other so. stuff that I don't envy. Like, that's, I mean, we talk to Ryan day about that all the time. Like I'm not trying to rain on your parade and celebrate, but like if that part, I, it's a different, different challenge. It is. It is. And that's where I think, I'll lean into you know my faith and, and the foundation that that is for me because I get strength from that. I get peace and wisdom and just you know. And then it's it's about being staying close to the people that have helped me get here and surround yourself with great mentors and people who can speak truth to you and you know the staff like all of those the people you're around those relationships are going to be critical for that certainly and, and none more critical than those relationships with the players. So. What is your earliest memory of Ohio State basketball? You know, it, it's it's interesting. I didn't follow it as closely, really, and, and become nearly as invested as when my brother started playing here. And my brother could have could have played anywhere, and I would have been invested in that program. And then when he would have graduated, 
you know, I might have followed from a distance. Sure. But when he was here and I got to really see just how special this program was, that that's when like my love and affection for this program took off. I got to see, you know, Thad Mata and those runs that, that they went on. And I was at those games when, you know, we, we played Wisconsin, my brother's senior night. And that the energy in this building, that game was, <laughs> was incredible. Um, so there had always been, you know, growing up in the state, you know, Ohio State's power and influence and just the passion of the fans. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the true love and connection with this program took off when, when my brother was here. Was he, did he get the first call after you got the job officially? Who, what was the pecking order? Who, who gets to find out first that it's done? We called, uh, we called my mom and dad. Okay. And then we worked our way to, to our, <laughs> to my brothers and my wife's, my wife's family. Right. So we started, started there. As you can imagine, there was a lot of excitement, emotion, <laughs> but, um, no, it was, it was a great night. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing to look at that, you know, from the outside I, for your family to have had your brother play here and leave the legacy he did for you yep. to now be in charge of the next phase of that for that, uh, for the, for what your dad has done in the game in the state of Ohio. I mean, that's, that gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. I'm not even inside of it. That's that kind of family legacy for basketball in the state. And then now in this building specifically, I'm putting the words into your mouth, but that's, that has to be so cool to be part of that. And I don't know if you feel pressure to sustain that, live up to it moving forward. Again, I feel like I'm, you know, throwing some cold water on you, but that's, that's a lot on your plate now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But because of that passion and love I have for this program, I wouldn't want it any other way. Like I, there's a drive and a desire to, for Ohio State to, to be the best. It's what I love about this place. There's excellence being demanded all across this department. Like now I get to sit in a head coach meeting with, you know, just national championship coaches and, and people who are at the very pinnacle of their profession. So I tell guys in recruiting, one of the benefits of being at Ohio State is you get to walk around and be beside elite level people everywhere you go. Yeah. And so that, listen, we'll lean into the resources to help manage those things you, you talked about, the, the, our family legacy in this state, um, I think is most parent in the relationships and the connections we have. And, you know, I, I want to serve this, this state, the basketball community in the state. Part of being the head coach at Ohio State is, is serving them well and representing them well. So I, I want to do that to the, to the best of my ability. But when you put it, <laughs> we played here, won a state championship here. My brother plays here, has an unbelievable career. My dad coaching in Ohio State or in the state yep. of Ohio for we won't even say how many years. <laughs> for a few years. For how many years. <laughs> that like To me, that's a it, it's it's a God thing. Yeah. So it feels like, you know, a new, you've got a practice to run here shortly, so we're going to let you get to that. But you have a game on Tuesday night, and it feels like this is the, even though you've had the last month, kind of the start of the next chapter, a new chapter. You know, what would an NIT run? Why is it important for the Buckeyes to be in it? Get a, you got a, uh, an appeal to the crowd to come out. I know that this is important to you all to end this season on a on a on the note that you've been trending towards in the last few weeks. Yeah, I think our guys want to prove that you know. They're a really good team and and they belong in, in the postseason. So beautiful thing about the NIT is there's a championship to be won. So we're we're gonna be we're gonna be doing everything we can to 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 accomplish that. It's no guarantees, certainly, but it's not gonna be for lack of effort. Yeah. And I think, listen, we can't look too far ahead because we're playing a really good team tomorrow who sure. plays a unique style of basketball with very short time to prepare. So we're excited. Our guys have embraced adversity and challenges at, at just in such an oppressive way we're uh we're looking at this at no different than other than we get to go out we get to play together as a family and you know when when those lights are on and this group is is out there they're going to compete all right well jake think has to get back to work we've got a lot more talking tuesday coming your way we'll get back to football but we appreciate the new head coach of ohio state thank basketball you. joining thank us you. he's got a game tuesday night in this building against cornell Thanks. Thanks, Jake. Yep. Thank you. So weirdly enough, it's still it's Tuesday morning and Berm is here with me and we're still at the basketball yeah. arena. I don't know why we need to get over to the Woody's to start covering football practice. The sun 
has a so bright. strange fluorescent feel to it today, yeah. but I'm here for it. Um, and you know, we're going to talk football, not basketball. Those of you who are not basketball fans, we appreciate you sticking with us for that first 11, 12 minutes or so of the podcast daily. But it's pretty important to talk to the head basketball coach when you get an opportunity. And Jake Dealer was pretty impressive. And you, you can see why recruits like him. You mm -hmm. can see why the kids on his team like him. There's a genuine... Uh, ness about him and an authenticity that like, you the dude loves ohio and that it, you know that's not always a recipe for success when you're coaching at ohio state but i don't know that it's ever been like a detriment for someone coaching at ohio state so <laughs> it's a good starting place you yeah. know so i uh, will let's talk football all right so again a lot in common as as uh, jake debor takes over from what ryan day did you know, six years ago uh, believe it or not uh, now this pivotal year for ryan day he's coming out of spring break we already know that the number one question on a Talking Tuesday is going to be about the running back uh, coach position. Beyond that, since we talked about it for, I don't know, the last five shows and all day Monday at Roosters, what else would you like to know this week? Yeah, I think we have talked that into the ground. I mean, we'll find out stuff when it happens this week. Um, to me, it's it's going to be about the quarterbacks. I mean, I, I maybe I'm a broken record there, but how are you intending on – do, does heading into this week with pads, with having more physical practice, does it change the way that you rotate guys in? Does it give you a sense of uh, maybe a better sense of what Will Howard is going to look like in this offense? Do you ex does does it change the way Devin Brown like he was great in December? We heard all time a whole bunch in December about how efficient Devin Brown was. We've heard that in the first couple weeks, first couple practices of spring, but. I don't think they were doing a lot of hitting in, in January or in December. No, nope. he gets hit early in the game and against uh, Missouri in the Cotton Bowl and is gone. So, I think they actually probably need to put some pressure on Devin Brown. To, looked to, even on that Thursday second practice right before spring break. Looked like he came off the field even a little gingerly. Yeah, it sounds like somebody may have stepped on or rolled up on the ankle. And then you know, I don't think that that means he's hurt, but it's a reminder of what you're talking about. You you have to go live. Yeah, you gotta you gotta put the. I think that's one luxury you have this spring that maybe you haven't in the past. Even though you don't know who the quarterback is, because you haven't really gotten an established pecking order. Even last year, I think we all assumed Kyle McCord would win the job, and then it, it took longer than we believed it would. But I wonder if that gives Ryan Day a little bit of license to freedom, to freelance a little bit. Say, hey, we can do some more things. We, maybe you're not going to let guys go haul off and hit him, but you don't need to have the black jersey on like every single rep. You know what I mean? You can find ways to put these kids in some uncomfortable positions and somebody has to win the quarterback job. So that really starts today. Yeah, I wonder. So I, I talked and asked both Ryan Day and Chip Kelly about this two weeks ago and said, well, they, everybody needs to develop. Everybody needs reps. Everybody needs an opportunity in spring. They'll keep rotating through. I think that's pretty easy to say on a Tuesday and Thursday when you don't have pads on and you're doing a lot of individual work. When the pads start coming on and the bullets are more live around the quarterbacks, even if they are in, in a non-contact jersey, and it becomes a one-versus-one one situation where you know that pressure is going to be different and Ohio State's trying to figure out some things on the right side of the offensive line. You don't really want to put Julian Sayan and Aaron Nolan in that situation. Lincoln Keenholz, maybe he's been in a, he's played in the Cotton Bowl, he's played against Missouri, he's seen the real bullets. That's a different conversation. But I do think that this is probably the week, especially if you're aiming towards some scrimmages. Uh, you, you can't rotate all five. You have to, you have to narrow it down. Even if it feels early, feels premature. There is a different level of urgency with the quarterback battle this spring because of what's looming after the spring yep. is over and in terms of learning the offense and, and establishing a, a, a path forward for Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz, and Will Howard. So I, I think this is probably that week that you start to see some of that. And obviously you need to be careful. In the last seven years, two of Ohio State's spring quarterback battles have been severely altered by guys hitting their hand on a helmet. And, and that changes a lot of, of how this week goes. So you want to give Devin Brown an opportunity to go out and, and prove that he can handle all of the parts of playing quarterback at Ohio State, but I think this is about seeing exactly where Will Howard is and his mental uh, adjustment to Ohio State. Beyond that, again, the offensive line, blah, 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 blah. I, I want to know what the hell, where CJ Hicks is in, in this puzzle, mm -hmm. because I don't, I don't know that you move Sonny Styles to linebacker if the intention is not to have him be the primary guy next to Cody Simon all year long, right? So where does CJ Hicks fit in if it's not if Sonny's not ready to go, how does CJ 
get ready to go by with Sonny having more like I think that's just a fascinating position obviously you have a first time full time the position coach like it's it's a really interesting spot and it feels sort of like you know trying to pick out the third place in a beauty contest because the defensive line and the secondary should be so good that even if the linebackers are good by comparison they may not look great but how does it how does it fill in and and because again I don't think you move Sonny unless you have a predisposition toward like he's going to play a lot so what does that mean for everyone else well that I mean that beauty pageant is going to have a third place finisher at linebacker as well in terms of either CJ Hicks or Sonny Styles are not going to be on the field on every single snap yeah. like one of those guys has to take that job and run with it so it goes hand in hand with you're talking about CJ Hicks now Sonny Styles is learning this position and he's playing closer to the line of scrimmage and he gets the pads on. He's got to go tackle some people for the next, you know, three, four weeks and 13 practices. What is that going to look like? Can, can he make make it so clear to James Laurinaitis that he must be the will linebacker that then you try and figure out something else for C.J. Hicks? Like it could also be the inverse. Like C.J. Hicks might finally be ready to take that next step uh, in in his third year in the program and make that job his own and force Ohio State to then expand what they want to do with Sonny Styles in a different way. That's, I think, on the defense, the only thing that is really uncertain about yeah. Ohio State right now. And that's that's where all the – normally I'd spend very little time paying attention to the linebackers. You, you're hoping to see who the next defensive end to step up is, but there's so much depth there. Defensive tackle, so much depth there. You know what the secondary is going to look like. To me, it is all focused around the linebackers. And Cody Simon is such a rock-solid contributor there in the middle. It's figuring out what to do with two of the best athletes on the roster. Yeah, and that's why it's weird because here you got CJ Hicks heading into year three. You've got Sonny Styles heading into year three, but year one week, two, two plus, two weeks yeah. of, of playing linebacker. So, like, there are, if, if CJ Hicks doesn't have the advantage now, when does he ever? And if he does have the advantage, what does that really mean for Sonny Styles? So, like, I, I'm, I'm endlessly curious about the linebackers and because. We've heard the name Gabe Powers over and over and over in the last six months. So where does he fit in? Like, there's just a lot of things there that I'm like, I, it's in a normal defense, you play three linebackers and you're like, okay, it's not a problem, but this is a two linebacker set because you don't take Jordan Hancock off the field. So it, it, it certainly opens up some intriguing possibilities for the spring. And I don't know how much Ryan Day is going to give us about that because they haven't seen that much. And because he's not going to talk about the defense a lot, I'm sure. But, like, that's something I, I'm curious about. Well, that ramps up today, Tuesday, um, as the Buckeyes get back from spring break and back onto the practice field in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. We will have coverage uh, after Ryan Day's press conference later on. See what we learn there. We'll see what happens with the running back coach position. Of course, we're continuing to work on that and, and waiting to see what the Buckeyes do. And then later on, Tuesday night, the Ohio State basketball team, Jake Debor, as the full-time coach, will make his quote-unquote debut yeah i'm gonna be here here. i'm gonna come to the game and you should too america you should be here firm's firm's gonna be here all week yeah so if you're in columbus anywhere if you're in columbus the weather's kind of crappy this week right like get out and support jake diebler he loves ohio and ohio should love him back we appreciate him giving some time and we appreciate you for starting your day with us on the podcast daily for tuesday stay tuned for more coverage on the podcast all week long very busy week coming in columbus Stick with us. He's Brian. I'm Austin. We'll talk to you later.